Welcome to this podcast. In this podcast, I'd like to talk about Saturn's placement in the second house. Now, I'll start the conversation by talking a little about the second house, what it really is in its most fundamental form. Now, the second house is just coming off the ascendant, basically. The first house and the ascendant points represent the birth of self-awareness. It represents the experience of self as it manifests into a new type of reality. But self doesn't know what it is when it is born into this world. It manifests as self-ignorance. And that's what the first house is. That's what the challenge of the first house is. It's about beginning the process that allows you to come to understand yourself. But that initial entry into this world, the initial experience, it doesn't really have a reference point. And so everything that finds itself in the first house is in a rush, on a mission, an impulse to get to the second house. Because it is only when these functional lights or planets, as you call them, only when they make the second house contact that they now begin to understand what they are. At least the journey takes on physical form. And so all planets in the first house really find their expression in the second house. Because the first house is the emanation of the impulse. But that emanation doesn't mean anything until it finds itself in the second house. Planets in the second house tell you about the relationship you have with your physical self. Because the second house is how you begin to make sense of physical reality. Prior to that, you don't know what this reality is, this experience on earth. You have no idea what it is. And so it is the stage at which the infant child begins to understand that it is a physical being. Because it can begin to relate to its material senses. So, in other words, the second house is the patterning of your physical body and your perception of it. It is the information from your material senses. It is what informs you of a material reality. It is indicated by the way your sense organs map into themselves. And this is very important because if your sense organs don't map into yourself correctly, then your perception of reality is distorted. And so you see that the second house has a latent function, so to speak. It is where you begin to understand physical reality. So planets in your second house really are informing you about the way that you perceive physical reality. Okay, And this is very important because it is from there that your perception of pleasure or your perception of value comes from. And value in the sense of proportion. You see, the second house is where the notion of physicality begins to make sense. And that notion itself is a kind of understanding regarding the structure of things, the measure of things. Because if, for instance, you can see a table, well, how do you begin to comprehend the notion of what that table is? The process starts based on visual inspection. And then all the other senses which you have now begin to contribute to the perception of that table. At the end of the day, you form a rudimentary understanding of the table. But what that table is really is not something that you're absolutely concerned with. The way that you perceive that table helps you to understand if that table is something that you like or something you don't like. And this is the beginning of the implementation of motive. The motive itself arises in the first house, but the second house is indicative of how that motive is translated into physical action. So that around your initial perception of that physical table, you now begin to weave a narrative. That narrative is at the root of what you consider to be your physical reality, and that's the nature of the second house. So planets that find themselves in the second house are really talking about the way that you begin to perceive, appreciate, or integrate the nature of material reality. That's really what it is. Because it is from these notions that the idea of beauty comes from. Because beauty is proportion, it's symmetry. But in order to be able to appreciate what symmetry is, even without knowing what it's called, or appreciate what beauty is, even without knowing what it's called, it is the form that informs you of the nature of beauty. But the form is also structural. So it is the structure that informs you of the nature of beauty. And that gives us an important insight into the second house. The second house is where you are able to appreciate the physical nature of form, the physical nature of structure, and the physical nature of rules. 
Why? Because the second house is the beginning point for all your material achievements that now find their peak expression in the tenth house. So there are three houses that deal with material expression. The second house, the sixth house, and the tenth house. But they're just various degrees of intensity of the same thing. So the second house is where the story actually takes off. The sixth house is the work that is being done to implement what now becomes the tenth house achievement. Okay? And if you've listened to my podcast on Virgo, you would understand what I'm talking about. Because the sixth house is where the functional requirements that must translate themselves into that peak achievement in the tenth house, that's where they're elicited for the very first time. The second house also talks about the physical health of your body in terms of how your sense organs are wired together, how they all come together to provide this sense of a unified reality. Planets in the second house tend to distort this unification so that they are weighted one way or the other. Okay. Now, they describe some of the things that you may be born with. They could be gifts tied to your physical senses or they could be ailments tied to your physical senses. It all depends on how the entire natal chart is interacting with itself. So to understand exactly if the planets in the second house represent ailments attached to your material body or gifts, you must delineate the entire natal chart because the story is all contained somewhere in there. Now, whether they are ailments or whether they are gifts, it doesn't really make any difference because the overall story itself is towards the manifestation of the highest good. That's the entire point. And the highest good in human life is achieved when you come to know yourself. Because knowing yourself is not really a philosophical thing like most people try to make it or a spiritual thing. No. If you want to achieve peak material experience in the most balanced way, the most positive way possible, you must come to know yourself. And what the second house indicates is it is the root via which that material experience germinates. And so once you know the root, then you know how the tree is going to grow. So planets in your second house are really talking about the root of that material experience. Obviously, there are many translations before you get to the 10th house, but understanding the roots helps you understand what those expectations for material achievement are going to be. And that's why some astrologers say that Venus, which is the natural ruler of Taurus, which is the natural sign attached to the second house, represents money. But astrology doesn't code for money. Okay, Astrology codes for things that are much deeper than physical things in the world. Astrology codes for root drives and motivations and emotions, so to speak. And then it blends them all together. The term astrology is something that needs to somehow be phased out because the real name for what is going on is not astrology per se. It's psychodynamics. Because your reality is basically the way that your mind is functioning at all its levels. Now, your self-awareness, that is your active focus, is not the only part of what you are. There's a whole lot, and you can imagine it that it is akin to the electromagnetic spectrum. You see, there are many wavelengths and frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum, but our vision has evolved to focus on what we consider to be visible light, which is a very narrow range in the infinitude of that spectrum. There are many reasons why this happened, and I have a podcast, an unreleased podcast that goes into the details of this, but the general idea is that there is a whole lot that exists in that spectrum that we're not particularly focused on. And it's the same thing with self-awareness because the spectrum itself is a spectrum of self-awareness. That's how self-awareness is. It's literally infinite. The part of your will and your conscious mind is just focusing on a very narrow range. There are many aspects of you that you can't really identify as you, but they're all linked together, working together to create the sense of self that is now existing in this material world with a mission and with a purpose. Knowing yourself means knowing this infinite spectrum of you and how it emanates as a reality that you are experiencing. This is what it means. There's nothing philosophical about it. It's more akin to a physics. Okay? And you can imagine a physics as being some type of machine where you have gears and levers, basically. Okay? So knowing what your gears and levers are that's the entire point of psychodynamics, what you call astrology. And it's one of the oldest sciences. Why? Because it is coming from an age of humanity where everything was known. Now, this is very hard to stomach or to accept, 
Because, what do you mean everything was known? Yeah, everything was known. Everything was understood, including the psychodynamics of a human being. It was well mapped and it was well understood. Why? Because that's the only way to understand the reality associated with mind. Because that reality is not different from mine. Your reality as you experience it today is not different from the narratives that are taking place all over the infinitude of the spectrum of your self-awareness. Somehow they're linked to it and they're being generated by it. But exactly how is missing. It's lost to time. And in its place, surrogates have emerged. And religion is one of those surrogates. It's just that it's not effective. It doesn't work. It doesn't leave the human being wiser. At best, it tells the human being to surrender, but you are a physical being on this planet for a reason, okay? If you discard the physicality, then you are being irresponsible. And the nature of that physicality, the origin story of that physicality, is what the second house is talking about. It's telling you how that physicality starts and what is expected of you. Because these expectations, they don't really exist outside of you. They are you. So by satisfying your own expectations, you come to know yourself better. Okay, and this is why we do natal chart synthesis, so that you can better understand your own expectations. And that's really what it is. It is not a stretch of the mind to see how the sense of beauty and proportion of form, how it translates into self-value. Because the beauty that you perceive in the world is not outside of you. It is internal of you. It is you. Okay, because it is you who are doing the perception. So, beauty is a state that is perceived by the human being when they can find proportionality and symmetry in the perception. So, you can perceive beauty through sound. You call that music. You can perceive beauty in the visual sense. You can perceive beauty through your five senses. Hmm? Well, that beauty that you're perceiving is not really outside of you. It is you. And there is a correlation between the type of beauty that you perceive and the nature of what? Your self-value. Your sense of worthiness. And so those who do not see beauty easily, they are those who do not see the beauty of themselves easily too. And being able to see the beauty of yourself is what gives you the inclination that your life has meaning. Because that's what that beauty is. That's the first projection of that beauty. Where it is really going to is a sense of self-significance, which is now found in Leo. But it germinates in the second house. The entire natal chart germinates in the second house as a real tangible thing. Prior to the second house, everything exists as a potential. Okay, So within the second house, you can find all the roots that eventually grew into the sense of self as you perceive it physically. That's really what it is. So planets in the second house are really talking about how you perceive this sense of internal value, internal harmony, or internal beauty. Because you are the one doing the perception, so there's really nothing outside of you per se. Okay? So Saturn in the second house really is a statement about the nature of this perception of internal value. It's the statement regarding the nature of internal worthiness. And because Saturn is located in the second house, it now means that the second house must experience what I have come to call in psychodynamics as the Capricornian journey which is a lifetime of effort in order to be able to receive something. So that it's a transactional process. The effort itself is one side of the transaction, and the other side of the transaction is this amazing gift to be received. And what is to be received in the second house is a sense of self-value that allows you to be able to see the world in ways where the value you see in the world corresponds to the value that you see within yourself. So that after a lifetime of building self-value, you can identify those things that are really valuable in the world. Now, value requires context in that sense. The context itself is beauty, but beauty is the arrangement of a narrative. It is the harmony that exists within some type of arrangement or organization. And so you must be able to see that same arrangement or organization in the reality outside of you as you perceive it. And that is what now allows you to incorporate that aspect of reality into yourself. And the incorporation is what you call possessions. Ownership. The sense of ownership is what allows you to initiate the notion of boundaries. Because if you must own something, then you must differentiate it from someone else owning it. Okay? 
this is how it works. When Saturn is in the second house, it makes all of these processes initially very difficult. And Saturn acts the way that it does because it is a denier. So normally consciousness flows across the houses with no boundaries. Consciousness doesn't really know the difference between the first house or the second house or the third house. These notions of houses are the ways that we as learning agents pattern the nature of experience for more effective tutorials so that we can teach about these areas as if they're independent things, but they're not. When Saturn is located in the second house, it means that consciousness cannot flow easily across what we consider to be second house matters. Matters pertaining to the nature of what? Value. The perception of value. Pleasure. And so it blocks the natural creation of this sense of self-value that happens in everybody's life at some point in time while you're basically developing as a human. At some point in time, you begin to understand the notion of your own value. Why? Because as you interact with the world around you, you begin to get this sense based on the type of interactivities that you're having. And after a while, you can be able to say, okay, this is what I want and this is what I don't want. But some people struggle with this. They don't know what they want. And that is always tied to the fact that they have not been able to perceive themselves in ways that satisfy their requirements for value. And because there is no difference between the internal and the external, they cannot acquire in the world. They cannot initiate boundaries so that the notion of possession remains blurry to them. Now, these are topical things in the sense that a human being is a physical being. In that sense, you have a body. So whether you accept your body or not, you still have a body. So what is impaired with Saturn's placement in the second house is the relationship the human being has with their body. They have it, but they don't know how to take care of it. They do not consider or prioritize taking care of their body because for all intents and purposes, it's not their body. They have dissociated at that level so that their body appears to be something different from what they are. And that's the way they treat it. So the early years may be a struggle in that sense. Things related to taking care of the body, proper hygiene, etc. It may be a struggle. Eating well. Because they do not consider or they have not been able to put together the notion of value. Why? Because that notion of value is an important theme in their life. And it is tied to their life story. Hence why Saturn is sitting in the second house. Which requires effort in that house. And effort is simply what? Concentration. It means that your character needs to be deepened in that area. Why? Because you will need it to complete your life story. You will need it to make your life story work. And so Saturn in the second house is an important placement because it is telling you that the nature of the life story requires the construction of a great sense of self-value. And the only reason why that happens is so that you can identify value in what you consider to be a reality outside of you. So that you can understand the nature of acquisition so that you can understand the nature of possessions. That's why ultimately, with good effort, keeping your eye on the ball, Saturn in the second house is usually indicative of someone who eventually learns to acquire. Because they have struggled with the sense of value for so long, they have understood what it means. And they have understood what it means in a very practical sense. A sense that has utility in it. And that now allows them to be able to identify within the context, within the general context of the environment, sources of intrinsic value which they can now seek to acquire that's how it works when saturn is in the second house the individual does not know what to say yes and what to say no to initially and that goes on for maybe the first three decades of life now they're saying yes and they're saying no to a lot of things because you cannot go through your life without these choices right but it is the pattern of the yeses and the noes that's where the disturbance really is they say yes to the wrong things they say no to the right things. And most of the time, they don't know the difference. You know, it's just jumbled up because it doesn't matter to them. They cannot appreciate the value of how it matters because they must appreciate that not as a natural inborn instinct. They must appreciate it as an effort. Now, you see this many times in the natal chart that it is where you are capable of your greatest success that's where you initially find the greatest difficulty. And the reason is that every human being needs a sense of ownership. So Saturn in the second house is a very strategic placement in that sense of ownership. It impairs it initially to the point where it is akin to pulling back an arrow. You know, an archer pulls back an arrow 
and then when he lets it fly the arrow zooms off but the amount of force with which the arrow zooms off is proportional to how much the archer has pulled the arrow back on the bow that's really what it is so the initial point of saturn in the second house is to create difficulty in the area of ownership and you notice this you see the first signs in the way the person treats their body the way they treat their five senses eh, they couldn't really be bothered they dress whichever way they want it's not really important to them that's because they do not see that body yet as an object of value but over time as time goes on the frustrations that are created are always linked to that area okay they may be denied certain things just because of the way they look they may be criticized for the way they look now saturn in the second house also means that despite the fact that the person is not paying attention to those second house matters they care deeply about those second house matters when they come in the form of criticism now initially the person goes and hides because you know the criticism is so heavy they don't really want to take it so they pretend that area of their life does not exist but the pressure does not go anywhere it just continues to build and eventually the person is forced to pay attention to that area and the significant fears in that area force the person to hold on very strongly they hold on with a stubbornness and a ferocity they don't like to change they don't want any new thing to develop within that area of their reality which is the second house and so they might appear very miserly usually the changes begin to occur as the individual becomes more aware of themselves usually in teenage years by the time they're emerging into young adulthood they already know that this is an important area so it's about getting a handle on it by the time they hit the first Saturn return the job is complete it is the eventuality of beauty why because these people are naturally very beautiful people but they cannot see it they do not realize it they do not know it and because they cannot see it within themselves they cannot see it in the world outside of them so don't expect these people to be people that are initially very acquisitive they're not they cannot be because in order to acquire you need a sense of value they're not initially greedy at all there's no greed within them because they do not see anything really as their possession and that typifies an initially very low self-esteem that's just the way that it works the self does not see itself as any type of significance at all because this needs to grow okay but eventually what happens is that this individual becomes very acquisitive once they learn to understand the true notion of value within themselves they now project that easily into the world and these projections show up in the eighth house that's how these things work okay so that their possession of others needs to be moderated usually the natal chart will connect the two stories together because the very idea is that the sense of possession is not supposed to stop in the eighth house it's going all the way to the 10th house where you naturally find the zenith of the capricornian story that's where it's normally going okay so if you have saturn in the second house you need to look at the way that story is playing out especially with regards to the sixth house and the 10th house those functional lights or planets they're always connected they're telling a story regarding the nature of your material experience and when saturn is in the second house that material experience is very important to your life story that's really what it is saturn in the second house also affects the way action is taken now it doesn't affect the need for action because that's a first house thing but it affects the way in which the individual goes about taking action because in the second house there is no sense of value when saturn is sitting there and so the individual doesn't really know how to use their body to extend their body either through the use of their vocals you know when you speak or when you listen or when you see these are the things with which we use to acquire an experience of physical reality the individual doesn't know how to use those initially so where they're supposed to open their mouth and ask for something they're quiet or the opposite so saturn in the second house is a way of learning how to use your five senses in ways that allow you to seek and solidify value within yourself so if you are not initially born with a good singing voice because you don't think so but then you must train your voice and eventually become a very good singer now saturn in the second house is an indication that the talents are already there. all the physical attributes are there but the individual cannot perceive them so it is a dissociation of some kind because the physical being cannot really be separated from the self 
but because there's Saturn in the second house, the individual does not really blend together with that physical experience. And so they dissociate it. Okay. And so initially they may blame the fact that they cannot acquire, they may blame it on others because the self is dissociated at that level. Okay. So it considers that it itself is not responsible for its pleasures and its displeasures. So that's the initial thing that Saturn in the second house must then outgrow with maturity. The cure for Saturn in the second house is time. It's time. All Saturn placements, the cure for them all is time and experience. Because as the individual matures, they begin to filter out those experiences that do not correspond to the reality that Saturn is indicating in the natal chart. That's how these things work. So the first stage of the Saturn in second house person is that you do not understand your sense of self-value. And so you make life choices based on that misunderstanding. And then it leads you to places that you cannot accept. Because you will end up in situations that are mediocre. And mediocrity is simply that you have expectations of yourself that are really based on evidence. But your reality does not match those expectations. And so you are underperforming. Now, this has happened because you do not have the ability to say no. You don't know what to say no to and what to say yes to. That's how Saturn and Second House manifest initially. And then the individual begins to internalize the lessons. The lessons revolve around value around the nature of pleasure because Saturn in the second house initially gives a sense of guilt and shame associated with the acquisition of pleasure. But once these are dispelled as a result of maturity, then the individual can now focus on that which gives them pleasure without the guilt and without the shame because what you enjoy is based on how you value yourself. What you say no to is based on how you value yourself. And it is this sense of internal value that allows you to know what to value in a reality system. Whether it's in business, whether it's in finance, whether it's in occupation. Whenever you have to make a choice where value is on the table, the only value you can see is the value attached to yourself. So Saturn in the second house is a life story that is concerned with the proper calibration of the sense of value. So it could be an overestimation of the sense of value or an underestimation of the sense of value, either which will lead to problems in the life of the individual with Saturn and the second. And the reason is because the transformations that need to occur somewhere in the natal chart depend on these initial errors. They now become the raw material upon which the psyche will use to correct this notion or this sense of value. So that what emerges in the mature individual is someone who has understood the sense of value in such a way that that sense of value can now seek social acceptance because it knows what value looks like in the social sphere. And so the person with Saturn in the second house may initially get married to or enter into relationships with people that are not deserving of them. But they don't know this initially because the sense of value is impaired. And so eventually when the sense of value begins to become corrected, when the individual begins to experience acceptance in the world, meaning they have understood how to value themselves or they are in the process of doing so, then they are better able to see a relationship partner best suitable for them. And that's how these things work. So, in conclusion, the way to tackle Saturn in the second house, if you have that as a placement, you must start with the cultivation of the sense of beauty, the sense of harmony. And you can do that by starting with your own body. You must learn to take care of yourself. You can start it as a habit, something you just need to do, even if you don't see the need, even if you don't feel like it. But by paying attention to your body and making that a routine, then it becomes a habit. And after a while, you begin to see the reason why. Because it will change your reality. Because making yourself look attractive is a step towards attracting. That's how it works. Because you live in a physical world. Even though we're not essentially only physical beings, but we live in a physical world. We get to interact with others. And interacting with others means that we begin to blend our realities with theirs. And when Saturn is in the second house, there is a natural hesitation to do this. Because the individual doesn't feel attractive. But by focusing on making yourself attractive as a habit, then the sense of value begins to grow. 
gradually, naturally. But ultimately, the sense of value that will be developed with Saturn in the second house must come from the creation of the externalization of that value. You must build something. And you must build something that signifies all your struggles towards the acceptance of the eventuality of your beauty. That product must symbolize that journey. And that is the nature of your success.